Why use the OLS estimator, the ordinary least squares estimator? They are both practical uh, and theoretical reasons to use the ordinary least squares estimators, beta sub naught hat and beta sub one hat, because the ordinary least squares is the dominant method used in practice. It has become the common language for regression analysis throughout economics, finance, see the beta of a stock box, and the social sciences more generally. Presenting results using ordinary least squares or its variants discussed later in this text means that you are speaking the same language as other economists and statisticians. The ordinary least squares formulas are built into virtually all spreadsheet and statistical software packages making ordinary least squares easy to use. The ordinary least squares estimators also have desirable theoretical properties. They are analogous to the desirable properties studied in section 3.1 of big line bar as an estimator of the population mean under the assumptions introduced in section 4.4 the ordinary least squares estimator is unbiased and consistent the ordinary least squares estimator is also efficient among a certain class of unbiased estimators however this efficiency results holds under some additional special conditions and further discussion of this result is deferred until section 5.5 the section the beta of a stock a fundamental idea of modern finance is that an investor needs a financial incentive to take a risk uh, said differently, the expected return on a risky investment, big R, must exceed the return on a safe or risk-free investment, big R, sub F. There's a superscript 1 in the sentence. It reads, the return on an investment is the change in its price plus any payout dividend from the investment as a percentage of its initial price. For example, a stock bought on January 1 for $100 which then paid a $2.50 dividend during the year and sold on December 31st for $105 would have a return of R equals 105 minus 100 plus 250 over 100 equals 75%. Returning to the text. Uh, thus, the expected excess return, R minus R sub F, on a risk investment, like owning stock in a company, should be positive. And first, it might seem like the risk of a stock should be measured by its variance. Much of that risk, however, can be reduced by holding other stocks in a portfolio. In other words, by diversifying your financial holdings. This means that the right way to measure the risk of a stock is not by its variance, but rather by its covariance with the market. The capital asset pricing model, open CAPM, close, formalizes this idea. According to the capital asset pricing model, the expected excess return on an asset is proportional to the expected excess return on a portfolio of all available assets, the market portfolio. That is, the capital asset pricing model says that R minus, excuse me, the capital asset pricing model uh, says that big R minus big R sub F equals beta open big R sub M minus big R sub F close equation 4.10 where big R sub M is the expected return on the market portfolio and beta is the coefficient in the population regression of big R minus big R sub F on big R sub M minus big R sub F. In practice, the risk-free return is often taken to be the rate of interest on short-term U.S. government debt. According to the capital asset pricing model, a stock with beta less than 1 has less risk than the market portfolio and therefore has a lower expected excess return than the market portfolio. See the remainder of the text.